What's up everybody? It's the Inhuman One here and today we're going to explore a world where television sets provide us not only entertainment but news on current events, vital information, and even instructions on how to survive during catastrophic events. Imagine a world that was so dependent on such a device. Wouldn't that be a sight? <laughs> well, you don't have to think hard to realize that you already exist in that world. In Johnny Kevorkian's 2018 film, Await Further Instructions, this topic is explored to the extreme and also features a sci-fi monster twist. In this video, we'll be exploring the creature that has laid siege on the Milgram family and countless others. For the sake of simplicity, I will refer to this unnamed creature as the Cable Monster. We will be analyzing its possible origins, its powers and abilities, its purpose, and of course how to defeat it. If you are interested in me reviving the How to Beat series, where I explore how to defeat some of the most infamous monsters in all of the sci-fi horror genre, please be sure to let me know in the comments. And without further ado, let's get started. Although it is never explicitly stated, the Cable Monster is likely to have extraterrestrial origins. Despite the incessant mindless conjectures of Mr. Milgram and his family crediting this to a government quarantine, this is simply incorrect. In the ending scenes, it is implied that the Cable Monster seemingly invaded the Milgram home and possibly the world overnight. The sheer amount of effort, time, and resources for multiple world governments to cooperate in an effort to imprison innocent civilians is highly unlikely and equally improbable. Further evidence of the Cable Monster's alien nature is its motivations. It seeks to subjugate the human race and be worshipped as a deity. It even threatens the eradication of the human race when faced with opposition. We never truly learn where this creature comes from, but we are able to discern several key factors after careful scrutiny of the Cable Monster's behaviors. The Cable Monster's physical form is composed entirely of nearly indestructible metal cables that coil with one another to weave into an impenetrable net. Each cable can function independently and ends in a small camera, allowing it to not only hear but see all actions occurring within its latest human petri dish. These sentient cables are made from a technology far beyond our own and seem to operate as a singular hive mind. In a number of instances, the cables from different parts of the home combine to form a mass large enough and long enough to lift Mr. Milgram and use him as a sort of puppet to verbally communicate his desire to be worshipped. The black fumes that the Cable Monster pumps into its subjects' homes and shelters serves as even more evidence of the incredibly advanced technology at its disposal. Although it seems to simply be a toxic gas, its explosive effects and the fact that it seems to eat away at organic matter leads me to believe that these are actually nanomachines that are programmed to carry out specific purposes. In this case, make mum go pop. The Cable Monster is also a master strategist. In less than a day, the creature disabled all cell towers, isolated and confined small pockets of humanity, installed pipes to allow passage for nanomachines, trespassed into secured homes, and crept into any and all TV sets located indoors. And all of this was done in the cover of the night. The Cable Monster's motivations are quite clear, as it explicitly states on numerous occasions that it wants to be worshipped. It utilizes effective tactics such as deception, manipulation, and inciting panic amongst its subjects. Over the course of time, these factors can weigh heavily on the human psyche and increase stress levels resulting in poor decision making, irritability, and ultimately violence. The Cable Monster asserts its authoritative position on the TV screen, a trusted source of information for most humans, and works to break down the mental barriers of those that show signs of mental resilience by pitting them against one each other. The Cable Monster carefully observes the behaviors of its subjects after each new instruction provided. Each new message serves as an experiment that results in gathering more information and data on its subjects. When it has gathered enough data, the Cable Monster is able to effectively control its subjects by way of fear, devotion, or killing those who continue to disobey. In summary, the Cable Monster is quite the force to be reckoned with, so how do we beat it? I believe the most important survival tactic in any situation is preparation. Heavy reliance on mobile forms of communication, TV, and other forms of media relying on technology can be a huge detriment during an invasion or similar catastrophic event. Another seemingly effective tactic would be to simply own a flat screen TV or even a small projector. The Cable Monster needs to implant itself inside of a device that has a screen in order to project its messages. 
Despite its coiled form, it still has a sort of beating heart that powers the device and allows it to deliver new instructions. Despite being a film from 2018, the television sets were all direct view TVs or ones that used the now retro cathode ray tube technology. These TVs are typically much more square in shape and have large compartments in the back to hold the necessary components. If one were to limit the number of devices that meet the size requirements and also have a screen, then the influence of the cable monster would be incredibly limited. The next best option would be to take shelter in an open space that could not easily be surrounded by the cable monster's cables. Underground bunkers, large recreational vehicles, or open air shelters and desolate areas could all serve as difficult targets for the However, if you were like many of the humans in the film and were caught by surprise by this malevolent force, then options for survival and defeating the monster are almost non-existent, because in a worldwide invasion, the number one goal is survival rather than defeating the threat. One tactic that was not explored was feigning submission and giving into the instructions of the cable monster. It is possible that once dominance has been established, it may allow its subjects more freedom to function normally. The Milgram family was fortunate to have enough food and water to survive the several days they were in confinement, but the circumstances surrounding a long-term confinement are unclear. It is possible that the cable monster would provide necessary provisions needed to survive, since we did see examples of this with syringe delivery. So in the end, this is one threat that we cannot easily defeat, but rather one that we need to escape from. The best thing to do in this situation is to live to fight another day regroup with other survivors, and identify the enemy's weakness. One final thing I want to mention that I found incredibly interesting was the Milgram family name. This seems to be a direct reference to the infamous 1961 Milgram experiment, named after the Yale psychologist Stanley Milgram. The purpose of this experiment was to test and observe the effects of obedience to authority. The results of the experiment were shocking, quite literally in fact, as the participants were instructed to administer shocks to other participants they would have reached fatal levels had they been real. It seems that authoritative figures can exploit our innate human desire to serve. If such a creature as the Cable Monster were to invade, would you be able to resist? Only time will tell. And until that time, it's the Inhuman One signing out. Welcome to my universe.